Hey everyone, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again today with another G.I. Joe action figure review for you. And today we're taking a look at another box set. Ta-da! This is the Cobra version of the G.I. Joe Resolute Battle Set. Um, so they released two of these, one with all G.I. Joe characters and one with all Cobra characters. Today we're looking at the all Cobra version and it's really cool. So in this set, you get uh, Zartan, an Alley Viper, Destro, Cobra Commander, the Baroness, Storm Shadow, and Firefly. So seven really awesome figures. Uh, so the Jaja Resolute, they came out with that as a um, direct-to-DVD movie miniseries kind of thing a while back. And um, essentially, these are the characters from that movie. And so all the characters in here have the likenesses from that film built into them. So it's a pretty cool set. So uh, these things are also kind of difficult to come by. It took me a while to track this one down. Uh, you can sometimes part out some of the individual figures fairly cheap. But as a whole, the box set is kind of difficult to get. Um, I guess they just weren't a lot of these around. And uh, so they fetch a slightly hefty price. And I don't like slightly hefty prices, so I had to wait around until I could find one that was in the price range I was willing to pay for it. So I got a really good deal on this, along with the G.I. Joe version, which uh, we had in one of our previous episodes. So what we're doing today is just going to go ahead and unbox this Cobra version of the Resolute Battle Set. Then we'll take a look at all the individual figures and do a review of all of them. So stick with us. It's cool set. This is the G.I. Joe Resolute Cobra Battle Set. This is the mirror image of the uh, G.I. Joe, Joe Battle Set for Resolute. Uh, so this was based off the Resolute Animated Series, which was originally aired as a web series so they had like 10 or 12 episodes about five minutes a piece each they would air them once a week then they eventually put them all together aired them as one longer full-fledged series and then eventually released the uh, dvd set as well so but here we have the cobra version of the resolute team so you've got zartan cobra alley viper Destro, Cobra Commander, the Baroness, Storm Shadow, and Firefly. Packaging looks really nice. Again, they moved to this slightly smaller scale packaging set when they started doing the, the battle sets this year. The year this was released, not this year here. Uh, traditionally, they were a lot, lot thicker. To save on packaging, I guess they went to this smaller version uh, but it looks really nice take a look at the back you've got just the uh, different people going everywhere all that good stuff so overall very cool looking set and we're just going to go ahead and open it up here and uh, take a look at the figures one single piece of tape on the sides for each of these so just go ahead and uh, slice the tape open See if we can't pry this thing open. Without tearing it too awful much. But I guess it doesn't matter. We're not going to be keeping the packaging or anything. But uh, these things are in pretty tight. There we go. <clears throat> Pop open the flaps. Work our fingers in here and grab this set. Then we have the file cards here. And the rest of this now is just uh, recycling material. Again, the file cards, very cool. We'll open those a little bit later. Uh, as far as the actual set itself goes, the figures lift out of the package pretty easily. Uh, 
and you're left with this uh, really cool packaging diorama background thing. Uh, it looks like a forest floor. Pretty nice. You flip it around, they do have included here the uh, figure stands, which we're going to go ahead and uh, pull out. Like so. And there are a couple of little accessories still floating around in here. Uh, we'll look at them when we open this up and see, but uh, the diorama part is recycling now for us. And here's the set itself. So we're going to go ahead and uh, remove all of them. Before I get too far into this, though, I'm going to flip this around upside down and check for all these rubber bands that are holding lots of these things in place. So we're going to go ahead and slice them open as we find them just to save us in the future. I have a lot of these holding the legs in place and some of the accessories. If we miss a couple, that's fine. One on Destro here. Don't see anything on Cobra Commander. One on the feet of the Baroness. And at the top of her shoulders. Storm Shadow doesn't appear to have anything. And Firefly has something around his waist. Then this big old bazooka thing over here has something on it too. And I think that's the majority of them. <clears throat> so we flip them back over now. And we can start pulling this stuff out. If it's anything like the G.I. Joe set, we'll probably have to try to start at the feet and work our way around. <clears throat> We've got this big bazooka looking thing here. And all the pieces for it. And we'll zoom in a, in a few minutes to take a look at those individually. But. And Firefly's weapon. And he actually came out a lot easier than the Joe's, so. Uh, his legs are a little bit loose. That's okay. Move on to Mr. Storm Shadow. He's in there pretty tight. So we'll try to get his feet out first. Pretty cool looking. The Baroness's weapons here are loose. We'll just kind of pile everything over here in the corner until we get it all out. The Baroness. Pretty cool looking. We got this crazy cobra headed dagger. Cobra Commander comes out pretty easily. Pretty interesting looking. Next up we've got Destro.
it may be harder to get out. Again, pretty cool looking. Got an extra arm for him. And a briefcase. A pistol. Assault rifle thingy. Another assault rifle. Really big assault shotgun looking thing. Alley Viper. Which again does not look anything like the Alley Viper we've been uh, had traditional access to, but still. And then Zartan. these rubber bands off as we're going mostly cool weapon there for Zartan destro 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 Cobra Commander, the Baroness, Storm Shadow, Firefly. So that's everything that comes with this set. A lot of cool looking figures. We'll zoom in now to each one of these and review them individually and see what we've got. We'll start with the file cards. They come in this nice plastic case. It's a bag with a piece of tape on it. So we've got Zartan. Pretty cool looking uh, characterization there in the side, the illustration. The backs of these are the uh, really glossy black. Alley Viper. Destro, Cobra Commander, the Baroness, Storm Shadow, and Firefly. Pretty cool. While we're at it, we're going to go ahead and look at the figure stands. Again, they're just simply taped up here in the top corner. We'll dump these things out and see what extra stuff we have. So these are the uh, traditional figure stands that we've seen with all the rest of the 25th anniversary line and up. The embossed Cobra logo there and then just the uh, figure itself code name for the Baroness. Storm Shadow Firefly, Zartan, Destro, the Alley Viper, and Cobra Commander. And we also have four small accessories. So we've got two of these little pistols, another little pistol, slightly bigger, and a knife. So We'll try to match those up with the people that they uh, kind of go with here and kind of see from there. But up first we have Firefly. He comes with this really big cannon. This 
So uh, just to review it real quick, you just push the uh, missile in there and it kind of folds up like so. And it's kind of locked in place. Uh, but to fire it, you just open that up and there's a small black button here on the back. Press it and it fires. So pretty cool little feature. You've got this big red missile that comes with it. Just to see what happens when you have it closed up, it opens for you. So you don't actually have to have it clo uh, open, which is kind of cool. I didn't expect that. That's cool. Anyways, so there is that. Uh, you also have tripod here. So we'll go ahead and uh, put it together. So the tripod itself, got a lot of detail work on it. Got a connection piece here that just pops in place like that. Then your pivot point here, which attaches to the bottom of the big cannon, like so. And just rotates around, up and down, whatever you need it to do. It's pretty awesome. Then the actual firing mechanism is on the side of it. You've got a handle on the other side, and then another handle trigger here in the rear back bottom. That's cool. Pretty awesome. Moving on to the rest of Firefly. It comes with this uh, crazy silver assault rifle. We can get this to focus in for us. A lot of detail work. Two-tone, it's got the black and the silver on it. It's pretty nice. His backpack is pretty reminiscent of the original one that came with the figure. Got all the communication stuff on here. Remote trigger detonators and things like that. A lot of cool detail on this thing. You can zoom in a little bit and... Hopefully focus that. That's pretty cool. The figure itself, uh, pretty cool looking. The face, I'm not too thrilled about. But it works. You got a lot of nice detail work on his flag jacket. His arms and everything. He does have a sheath on his back. And that is where the little bitty knife comes from that we had in the accessory pack. The knife just slides right in there, like so. It stays put, which is good. Articulation-wise, we have swivel at the head, so 360 and up and down. Traditional shoulder joint, so ball and rocker. Elbow, same thing, swivel and rotate. And then just a traditional swivel at the wrist. Then at the chest, you have the uh, traditional ab crunch feature. Uh, but again, the flak jacket kind of prevents pretty much any motion. So it's there, but you can't really use it too much. So not a big deal, but just something to be looking out for. Traditional T-hook at the waist. So... Plenty of articulation there. Double knee joint. Ball and rocker at the ankle. All in all, lots of nice articulation there. Pretty cool detail work. About the only thing I'll say just off the top of my head is it would have been nice to have a cobra symbol somewhere on him. But alas... That is not the case here. As far as his backpack goes, pegs into his back very easily. No problem there. The knife does not get in the way. His assault weapon fits in his hand pretty easily. I've never been really fond of these uh, weapons with the clips on behind the handle. Just makes it difficult usually to get it in. But once you get it in place, no problem. And then as far as the big cannon goes, 
his hand can grip it pretty easily. If I can get in here, there we go, pretty easily. So you can set up shop and do whatever he needs to to fire that big cannon off. So the only real downside here is that there's nowhere to store the cannon. It doesn't exactly attach to like his backpack or anything like that. So carrying it around is going to be a problem, but overall, pretty cool figure. I like the cannon. Next up we have Storm Shadow. His weapons are rubber banded to his arms, so I'll go ahead and cut those off real quick. <clears throat> Pull them off. So, up first we have his uh, katanas. Nice curved katana. Lots of nice detail work. The uh, short one, the wakasa, something like that. <laughs> short one has some nice detail work on it. It also has the Arashagi clan symbol. <laughs> so, very nice. His backpack has the sheaths for his two swords. It is nicely detailed as well. The bigger sword fits at the top. Just slides right in place like so. Then the smaller one fits on the bottom and slides in there like so as well. And fits in there very nicely. The pack attaches to his back easily mostly easily uh, it does have to kind of slightly go at an angle here but uh, whoop. it makes sense though because uh, you want the swords to be at the shoulder so it does work the other accessory here is this cool claw hook thing that attaches to his arm Makes him look like Wolverine. But it works pretty well. Moving on to the figure itself. Nice detail work. It's uh, pretty plain and simple. But simple often works better than anything else. His hood does come off. It looks nice attached and it's a little loose when it's attached but it's nice that it comes off and then you have regular storm shadow underneath detail work nice rope across his chest Cobra tattoo and the uh, Arashaki clan tattoo there on his other arm so yeah overall very nice Articulation wise, the head rotates 360 degrees, up and down motion. Armed a little stiff, but uh, traditional shoulder joint. Ball and swivel there at the elbow. And the wrist is a simple swivel, and it is just above his bandages there not at the actual wrist itself. Uh, he does have the ab crunch feature but because of his sculpted I don't know what you call it but uh, his shirt <laughs> you don't get a whole lot of motion there. The left and right works but that's about it. Traditional T-joint T-hook joint at the waist double knee joint and swivel and rocker at the ankle. So all in all, very nice articulation. 
not a lot of detail, but uh, what is there works really well. And it looks really nice. So, yeah, pretty cool. Attach the big, big, hood, yeah, big hood back on there. Attach the swords. Attach the crazy wolverine claws. And then the swords. So I will note that the swords are a little bit loose in his hands. Which is a little bit of a shame, but all in all it still works. I'm sure you could, uh, it's pretty flexible, whoops, <laughs> pretty flexible plastic so you can uh, just kind of squeeze in on his hand to get it to go a little tighter as needed and then you shouldn't have a problem with it. Oh. <clears throat> his crazy hood does keep flying off on mine so that's something to watch out for but all in all a pretty good uh, representation of Storm Shadow. Here we have the Baroness. She comes with these two Uzi assault pistol thingies. Uh, they're pretty cool looking. Nice silver color, a lot of detail work on them. But nothing too special. The figure itself, pretty nice looking sculpt so far. Uh, the hair looks a little odd, and the glasses do make her look a little weird, but uh, overall, not bad. The little skirt thing here is really cool looking. A lot of nice detail work on the overall sculpt. Nice reuse of some existing ones with a little bit of weird paint job on it right here on the thighs, but all in all, not bad at all. Articulation-wise, the head does rotate around and pops off very easily as you see here <laughs> not supposed to do that the molded hair does make motion a little bit limited but she can turn her head quite a bit and at least down motion is pretty good up not so much traditional ball and rocker at the shoulder joint ball and rocker at the elbow and then at the wrist, just a regular swivel. The ab crunch feature is present. Nice waist twist and quite a range of motion. Hip joints, the traditional T hook style. Double knee joint. And a rocker and ball at the ankle as well. It's a little hard to get to go but you can see there. Overall really nice looking figure to be honest with you. Pistols fit in her hand really easily. and They actually stay in place so that's a good thing. So, no trouble with her holding her weapons. Again, some nice detail work. A little odd choice with the coloration here and there, but uh, all in all, not bad. Pretty cool looking figure. Up next we have Cobra Commander. To start off with, we have this really cool looking dagger. Let's see how well we can get this to focus. Really nice detail work on it, a nice paint job. But all in all, just a traditional dagger. We've seen this one before, but it's still very nice. He also has a nice sword on his side. Slides out of its sheath pretty easily. Pretty nice detail work on it as well. And 
The figure itself has a nice sculpt to it. Uh, the helmet made of this soft plastic, so it is uh, non-removable, actually. Actually, it is removable. It's got uh, that really weird chrome faceplate there. Uh, the helmet, again, is really soft plastic, so it has a tendency to kind of bend out on you. So you may have to go in there and bend it back a little bit to get it to look right. But you put it back on, and it looks pretty cool in place. So it's a little loose fitting, so it may pop off a little easier after you take it off the first time. Nice cape here. Nice detail work on it. We can focus in on that a little bit. Really nice looking. Overall, this is a really nice looking Cobra Commander. Uh, for the sake of argument, we're going to pull the head, the helmet off for the articulation. 360 degree rotation there and up and down motion is very nice. The uh, cape restricts some of the motion, but not a whole lot, to be honest with you, as far as the uh, shoulders and arms go. Still have a pretty good range of motion, even with the thing on there. Uh, you can pop the head off and pull the thing off completely if you want to, but we're not going to bother with that right now. Uh, the articulation rise shoulder is the traditional ball and swivel. Same at the elbow. And then the wrist is just a swivel. You do have the standard waist twist and ab crunch feature that's kind of limited by his large chest piece here. So not a lot of uh, ab crunch motion, but there's a little bit of play in there. The waist joint is the traditional T-hook the skirt that he's wearing does limit movement quite a bit actually so that's about the best you can get there goes forward pretty well though and backwards it does have a double knee joint and then the uh, swivel and rocker at the ankle all in all pretty cool looking the sword fits in the sheath pretty easily and it looks really nice in place like that. Then the uh, crazy dagger fits in his hand really easily. You can use it to stab Major Blug in the back if you would like. It's a little bit loose fitting, but uh, it still works pretty well. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in this small pistol with him. We can get the focus on that. Nice detail work on the little pistol. Pretty straightforward though. Slide that in his hand right there so he at least has something other than a knife to stab people with. And there you go. Very nice looking Cobra Commander, to be honest. Destro is next on our list. Starting with his accessories. We have this really cool looking Mars briefcase. You can slick your uh, fingernail in there and this thing pops open. Uh, it's pretty much the same briefcase we've seen in the past, it's got a flip up computer, whoops, computer screen. Uh, and this one has the nice bright green paint scheme going on, so it's a little easier to tell it apart. A couple of crazy darts in there, keyboard, all the control stuff. Uh, and as before, you'll notice there is a carved out section here in the back. Perfect size for this crazy assault rifle pistol machine gun thing. Uh, this is a very basic weapon. Not a lot of detail, but still looks really nice. 
and it just fits straight in here. It just snaps in place. And then you close up the briefcase and you've got a nice kind of Mars attache case or whatever you want to call it there that he can run around with. He also comes with this really cool looking assault rifle. Nice detail work on it. It has uh, two tones of color on it. So you've got the black in the center in the back and the dark gray on the scope and front stock. And then the clip is also that dark gray. So it works really nicely. It's a nice touch that they added. He also has an extra arm, which I don't know why they included here. Uh, it looks like part of the arm from a, the old battle android troopers. Again, I'm not really sure why they did that. Uh, he didn't actually do anything crazy with his arms in the actual animated movie. Uh, maybe it was a deleted scene, I'm not really sure, but uh, anyways, it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll pop it off and see if we can attach it here in a moment. Moving on to the actual figure itself, uh, it's a little bit larger than the rest of the figures. And again, it's a really nice looking sculpt. The head looks a little bit small in comparison with the rest of his body, but uh, overall it balances pretty well. It is a really cool looking sculpt. Nice detail work on it all around. Very well suited for Destro here. Articulation wise, the head rotates 360 degrees and has up and down motion. Let's see if we can get the arm to work here. They're a little bit stiff, but not too bad. Uh, traditional ball and swivel there at the arm. Uh, shoulder joint, that is. You also have a ball and swivel at the elbow. And then the wrist is just a traditional swivel. All in all, it works really well, though. This arm particularly is a little bit loose. See it wobbling around a little bit compared to the other arm, which was extremely stiff. The chest has the uh, rocker joint on it, so left and right swivel. Not a lot of ab crunch motion, though. And that's to be expected with the way they've sculpted the rest of the actual suit itself. And this uh, skirt that he's wearing does limit the rest of the articulation a bit. But he does have the traditional T-hook at the waist, which we can't see, but it's there. And again, it does limit articulation. He does have double knee joint, which again is very difficult to see. And then at the uh, ankle uh, swivel and rocker. So all the articulation is there, it's just pretty much limited by the way the rest of the body is sculpted. Let's see if we can pull this arm off. Ah, just pops out like that. And then we can take this uh, robot looking arm and stick it back in place right there. And it actually went in pretty easily, so there's your battle damage Destro. Pop that back off and put the uh, original one back in there. If I can get it to line up. There we go. And all in all, it looks really nice. On his uh, waist, he does have two holsters here, as you can see, that are empty. Perfect for these two little pistols that came in the accessory pack. We'll zoom in and hopefully focus on one at least. Uh, not a lot of detail on them, but a nice silver color.
and they fit in the holster extremely easily. As I've stated before, I always enjoy the fact that you've got holsters that can be used with removable weapons, so it's a plus for this one. Uh, holding the weapons, again, I'm not a really big fan of these crazy handle weaponed things. So let's see if we can get him to grasp this one. This is really my only complaint about them is just the fact that you really can't get their hands in here to grip anything. There we go. Press in on a little bit and it kind of pops out. So once you do have it, he can hold it very easily. Then the other hand can grab his briefcase. And there you go, Destro running around. It'd be nice if this would like fit in this case or something like that, but yeah. All in all though, this is a cool looking Destro figure. It works really well. And I actually like this one quite a bit. This is the Alley Viper. Weapon wise, we've got this uh, kind of traditional assault rifle weapon thing here same one that came with Firefly pretty basic nice two-tone paint job though bright silver and then the black so nothing too special but it works we also have this really large mega assault shotgun I guess I'll call it some nice detail work on it single paint scheme on it just solid black but nice detail work though moving on to the figure itself again this is not the same alley viper as we're used to uh, this is a more subdued version but all in all it looks pretty good it's more of a shock trooper than anything got some nice detail work on it flak vest works pretty well the nice cobra symbol on it uh, the helmet with the goggles is a nice little touch I don't know if it comes off doesn't come off easily the uh, goggles pop off or I should say you can pull them off and underneath you can kinda see the guys eyes pretty nice looking face then the helmet does come off and you've got the traditional neo viper face there that looks really silly without the helmet on there it's extremely small in contrast to the rest of his body so we're probably going to keep that helmet on him and to be honest I do like the way the goggles look on him so we'll try to stick these back on there and stretch that back in place so it works pretty well like that articulation wise the head does rotate 360 degrees and has pretty good up and down motion as well it being a helmet it's a little slicker than most I guess so it's a uh, the up and down is kind of a lot to do with that helmet uh, shoulder articulation he does have these extra shoulder pads that are kind of built into it and it's their flexible material so they may pop off pretty easily but they don't hinder movement at all ball and swivel there at the uh, shoulder joint ball and swivel at the elbow and just the swivel at the wrist does have the rocker motion there but again the flak vest does limit mobility quite a bit there you aren't going to get much left and right or ab crunch feature out of it with the vest on traditional T 
hook for the waist and double knee joint and rocker and swivel at the ankle. So all in all, really nice articulation. Pretty cool looking figure to be honest with you. It's uh, growing on me more and more as we go along. Definitely not my favorite Alley Viper, but a nice looking shock trooper anyways. His big shotgun thing fits in his hand. It's uh, The handle is a little oversized, so it's going to probably be a little loose there, but it does fit easily enough. Then his secondary machine gunny thing fits in his other hand pretty easily. And he's all armed and ready to go into combat, so yeah. Overall, pretty nice figure. The only thing I can think of, really, uh, is he probably needs a little bit more armor on his uh, thighs here. And that probably would have set this figure off into a stellar figure. As it is, it's just a really good figure. So, yeah. The last figure in this set is Zartan. He comes with two weapons. Uh, we'll take a look at this small one first. It's a nice paint job on it. The two-tone color, the gray or black, and this cool kind of olive green. I'm not really sure what kind of weapon it is, but it's a pretty cool one. It's got three barrels. And it's pretty nice. It's kind of cool. His other weapon is this large traditional rifle kind of thing. Nice paint job on it as well. A lot of detail work in here. Uh, the barrel looks a little flimsy. It's a little bent. You can straighten it out a little bit. But I do like the two-tone colors here. It meshes well with Zartan, strangely enough, but uh, kind of a swamp green looking color. Then we have the figure itself. Some really nice detail work on this one. Um, in the package, I wasn't too impressed with this figure, but now that he's out and I'm looking at it more closely, it's uh, overall really nice looking, to be honest with you. A lot of really cool detail work in his armor. The head sculpt is really nice also. Got a little bit of a subdued face paint there which I wish was a little bit more pronounced but it works anyways the really cool looking green eyes there just kind of sets him off a little bit more he his cowl is kind of stuck in place so not meant to be removed but you can pop his head off and take the cowl off if you want to but it looks probably just as good with it on there traditionally he always has his cowl anyway so not worried about that the head does rotate 360 degrees. The up and down motion is limited because of that cowl, but it still works. Shoulder joint, traditional ball and swivel. Uh, his armor at the top of his shoulders does limit his motion a little bit, uh, so he can go about that far with his arm up. That's about it. Ball and swivel at the elbow, and then traditional swivel at the wrist. The waist joint is the traditional swivel there and has the ab crunch feature. Uh, it is again hampered a little bit by his armor, not as much as I thought it would be. Uh, the ab crunch feature is definitely limited, but the left right motion is still intact. Traditional T-hook for the waist, double knee joint, and rocker and swivel at the ankle. So all in all, really nice. Again, a lot of cool detail work on this particular figure. Lots of little pouches all the way around. Nice cobra symbol here. Been nice if that was a dreadnought symbol, but it's okay. He does work for cobra, so... So yeah, this is a pretty cool looking figure. As far as the weapons go, the small pistol fits in his hand really easily and attaches 
to the inside there for like a shock mount kind of thing. Then the other one does have this weird, really don't like these, but it's there. But luckily it doesn't hamper things too awful much. If you can kind of bend it around to get his uh, thumb into that spot right there, then you won't have a problem with it. Don't know that I pointed it out, but the uh, scope does have a nice little red paint job on it right there, so cool looking. So yeah, all in all, this is a cool looking Zartan. Really nice looking figure. Here we have all the figures together. Overall, it's a pretty nice set. Uh, the colors, again, are a little bit muted compared to you know other versions of the characters, but uh, as a set for the Resolute theme, it works really well. The standouts for me probably are Zartan and Destro and Cobra Commander. The rest of them, they work really well. But, yeah, I don't know. Zartan is a definite plus. Cobra Commander is a plus. Destro is about a half a plus, but still a plus. And the rest of them work well with the set, so yeah, you can't really complain too much about it. So That's been our review for the G.I. Joe Resolute Cobra Team Pack. All in all, this is actually a pretty cool set. Uh, the Cobra Commander figure particularly stands out to me. The rest of the figures, Zartan is pretty awesome. The other ones are kind of hit and miss. So yeah, if you can find it for a decent price, pick it up. Otherwise, maybe pick up a couple of them loose if you can find them for a cheap price. But uh, it's not a bad set. So, Anyways, that's all the time we've got for today. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Check out all of our past videos and stay tuned for future videos. Drop us some comments. Let us know what you'd like to see for future episodes. Who knows? We may try to get to them. Till next time, yo Joe.